God bless him. Uh, great songs and inspiration coming from those songs of praise and of thanksgiving unto the Lord. Prayer requests uh, being made to the Lord uh, as if you follow the uh, narrative and the lyrics of those songs. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Turn with us to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, a portion that was read earlier as we regard uh, verses 12 and 13. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. They read as follows. Now it came to pass... In those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. And from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles. Our theme still is prayer. The subject is Pray for direction. Pray for direction. Jesus at this time now in his uh, ministry, this is early ministry of Jesus, he had just completed the first of three tours, uh, the tours being known as Galilean tours in which he went around the region of Galilee uh, for several months. This is the ending of the first tour of the Galilean uh, ministry, and he's uh, preparing now for the second tour uh, that will be taking place in which his disciples uh, and apostles will be accompanying him. When it comes to the matter of prayer, Jesus is one who teaches many things about prayer. It is the Lord teaching even now, letting us know that we should never underestimate the need of prayer and we should never underestimate the power of prayer. Never underestimate the need and never underestimate the power. It was during Jesus' first tour, of which we touched on uh, somewhat on last Sunday, in which he involved himself in prayer, he prayed during that time, feeling, feeling uh, the issues that he was having to face and deal with. He had to deal with, if you recall, the uh, situation of uh, sin, uh, Satan's temptations coming before him. He had to deal with the power of sin and Satan. He had to deal with the pressures of life, the pressures of the ministry and of his journey. He had to deal with the uh, people's expectations. And if you recall, it was during that first Galilean tour and ministry that he was about that uh, Jesus rose early uh, one morning, and that's from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 1 and verse 35, that he stole away by himself early in the morning to pray, to pray. That was during the course of that ministry. We find that at the end of that tour, when he returned to his headquarter uh, area now, that uh, the pressures of the ministry were becoming even greater. The pressures of his mission and of his journey were intensifying we looked at uh, the fact that more and more people were becoming knowledgeable of who Jesus was. His fame was beginning to spread. And uh, if you look back in the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, 
and the verse 15. This is during the end of the first, first tour. It says, uh, however, the report went out, uh, uh, went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And the 16th verse of the fifth chapter, so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. During such an intensified time, during a time when the masses of people were coming to him, surrounding him more and more, Luke says that Jesus oft times, oft times, would withdraw himself and to pray. It's when you think that you don't have time to pray, that's when you need to pray all the more. Uh, you need to pray the most when you think you don't have time to pray. Spending time with God is the secret to getting power with God. When you take time, spend time in prayer to the Lord. And so now we find in this sixth chapter of Luke, Jesus is preparing for his second tour in which he wants to utilize his disciples. And he's having an, 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 an important decision that is upon him. Uh, again, looking at uh, verse 12 here in the sixth chapter. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Jesus was preparing to call together uh, his disciples. He had many followers, many disciples, but he wanted to call 12 uh, who would be the apostles. That word apostles just means those who were sent out, uh, those who would be serving in a special, special way. It came to pass in those days in order to make the decision as to who would be called to be the 12 among the many that Jesus spent all night, it says in prayer, picking his closest friends, choosing those who would travel the closest with him. Jesus didn't want to make any mistakes. He didn't want to call the wrong individuals. He didn't want it to be someone of whom others might feel, uh, a person who was popular, or uh, somebody who had the most money, or uh, somebody who looked the best, or uh, someone who had more clothes, or uh, the biggest house, or uh, the largest automobile. Jesus spent time in prayer with his Father to choose those 12 who would be the closest to him. Not only just praying, but spending, the word says, how much time? The night, the night in prayer, all night long. And when it was day, he called, verse 13 says, his disciples to himself, and from them he chose 12 whom he also named apostles. Like Jesus, all of us face pressures in life, Christians as well as non-Christians. We all face pressures. We all have to deal with problems. We have trials. We have temptations. We have pressures. We have stress upon us. We have uh, issues that we are confronted with day in and day out. Uh, when we find ourselves facing obstacles, find ourselves dealing with pressure, don't you want to deal with them appropriately, uh, 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 to handle them in the right way? Uh, uh, that's the time uh, more than ever before of when we need to turn to the Lord. And, and to trust in him and his direction. In the book of James, and 
you can put that passage up for us, Brother Jaron. In the first chapter of the book of James, uh, verses 2 through 5, James is talking to the uh, uh, members of the believing Christian community who have been spread abroad because of persecution. James is talking to the uh, believers. He's saying, my brethren, uh, uh, letting us know that uh, believers have stresses in life just as well as non-believers. He's saying, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. This is similar to what Peter was saying. We touched on a few weeks ago at Bishop Ross' anniversary. James is touching on the same thing. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. James is saying uh, to the believers, when you go through the difficult times, when you have the trials of life, count it joy because God is working something out in your life. He is saying, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. It is, it is that when we are tried, uh, uh, when we are tested, God is using that for our good, for our good. Not only for our good, uh, but we talked a little bit about it in our men's group yesterday that he uses our tests for our good and for his glory. In this instance, James is saying that uh, it is the testing of your faith that produces patience. Brother Kenny, uh, uh, as, as we know what we are talking about, uh, those who were with our brethren yesterday. Uh, but he is saying, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Let patience have its perfect work, so that you may be perfect and complete. The Lord uh, talked about the good that he's bringing out when we are tested. Don't you know it's to help us grow? It's to help us grow. You mentioned that in our Sunday school lesson this morning, right on target, bless you. Uh, 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 the testings that we go through, helping us to grow, helping us to grow uh, in our faith, helping us to grow stronger and, and uh, helping us, uh, what James is saying more so here, helping us not just to grow, but helping us to grow up. Uh, uh, there is a difference. You can grow and not grow up. Uh, uh, this is what the Lord wants to work through us as he is testing us trying us, proving us, coming through our test that we may be perfect and complete. In other words, that we may be mature Christian brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. It helps us through our prayers to overcome and indeed to be more like Jesus. As we are uh, in this vein, getting through our trials and our tribulations, sometimes we will ask the question, why? Have you ever been there? Why, why me? Why this? Why at this time? Why not somebody else? Uh, uh, wondering what is the reason, what's the basis uh, that we're going through? the struggles that we're going through, uh, uh, James is saying, adding a little bit more here to help us in that fifth verse, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, without putting you down for asking, and it will be given to him. Uh, that, that verse is quoted often, but I want you to get it in the right context in which James is writing this and the Lord is speaking to us, not just picking that passage out of the blue 
and just saying if you lack wisdom. He's talking about if you lack wisdom for why you're going through what you're going through. If you don't understand why you're suffering, if you don't understand uh, uh, the purpose of what the Lord is endeavoring to do in your life and in your struggle, if any lack wisdom, let him ask of God. When you're dealing with your pressures, oh, it helps church to have some direction to know which way to go, to help you understand what it is that God would have you to do. You need some direction from whom? James said, if you lack wisdom, ask God. In other words, pray to the Lord. Uh, spend some time in prayer with the Lord, and he is the one who will help us to understand, and he helps us to make it through. Sometimes God doesn't give you the reason in totality as to why it is that you're going through something. So don't let that be the problem if he doesn't answer as to why. You just keep asking for wisdom so that you can make it through, so you can have the strength, so you can grow, and so indeed that you can grow up. Oh, we need this church in our homes. I don't know about you, but uh, every now and then, Sister Jones and I have some situations in our home. Sometimes she doesn't act right. And, and, and we have some issues that we have to deal with. Uh, in the home. It's never me. Uh, uh, it's it's, it's, it's uh, always something that uh, uh, might occur, and I'll look at her in a strange way, or she'll look at me in a strange fashion, but my point is, church, we need direction in the home, in the home. Don't you know to help solve issues and to solve problems? When we ask God for direction in the home, through prayer, the Lord will give it. He will give it. When we ask for direction uh, in the schools, our young people here uh, in school, those who are uh, uh, still matriculating in public schools, some having graduated and some going on to universities and colleges, you need direction from the Lord. Don't you know we need that on our job? Uh, we need direction through prayer. The Lord will give you direction even on your job. With your businesses, the Lord will give direction. When it comes to your finances, and everybody has pressure, when it comes to your finances and your debt, you know you have more debt than you have dollars. And you need some direction to help you deal with the issues. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who will give that wisdom. He'll upbraid not, but the Lord indeed will show you what indeed you are to do. As we look at the further verses of that uh, passage in James, going down to verse 6, but when you ask God, ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. But let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. If you come to God and ask for direction and you don't believe he's going to answer, why even ask him? That's all James is saying. Ask in faith. Ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave on the sea, being driven here and there, a sign certainly of instability. When you ask in faith, the Lord will always answer. The Lord will answer. And when he answers, our next step is to be obedient to the answer. Our next step is to follow through, to be obedient, to obey with what it is that the Lord indeed would have us to do. This is when we ask of God, 
God always comes through when we ask in faith and when we believe. The Lord will tell us where we ought to be. The Lord will tell us what we ought to be doing when we ask him in faith, never doubting. The Lord will answer our prayers. There are times in life when God will trouble you. There are times in life when God will disturb you. Just in order to get your attention and to cause you to pray in order that you can get direction. There are times in your life when God will uh, turn your table upside down. There are times in life when God will allow the storms to come the stresses and the pressures of life to affect you in order to get your attention. You know how we are sometimes. We can get in a frame of mind when things are going well as to when we forget God and we think we've got it made that uh, we can do it all by ourselves. But God will allow something to come up, uh, not only to cause us to pray, but if you know the Lord at all, it'll make you pray. Uh, if you want true direction as to getting through the situation and the help that is necessary in order to overcome. I experienced this uh, several years ago in my life when I had been blessed. Uh, uh, and I'm going back uh, a few years ago when I was 25 years old, uh, that maybe five or six years ago. Uh, uh, during that time, uh, uh, the truth is, I uh, was in 1965, 1965 when I was 25, that the Lord had blessed me to come to a point in my life, he had helped me, blessed me, to get through college. Uh, the Lord had helped me, blessed me to be married to uh, my dear wife, and uh, he had blessed us with uh, our first son, and I had the job that I wanted and was doing well. Uh, but yet, I was troubled on the inside, troubled on the inside. I knew enough about uh, psychology, uh, enough to know that when you achieve sometimes a, a certain level, uh, the Lord blesses you uh, to accomplish some goals. When you reach that point, uh, you can uh, have depression uh, because you've reached that point and uh, uh, there's nothing else. And uh, yet, uh, that's not what I was feeling. Uh, I was troubled uh, in my spirit. Troubled in my spirit. And this went on for several months. And church, you talk about a difficult time, a difficult situation. Uh, my wife didn't know it. No one knew it. Uh, I was putting on a front uh, everywhere that I went, even in the church and even at home. You know, you can put a smile on your face and, and yet you're hurting on the inside. Uh, a smile and yet you're troubled uh, in your spirit until I uh, came to a point as to where it was so disturbing that on a Saturday night, I called on the Lord, had been in prayer, and realized that in my prayers, I, I, I had not really been praying. I had just been talking, uh, uh, saying words, and uh, but on that Saturday night, 
I prayed, and I prayed through the night. And I asked the Lord, Lord, on tomorrow, on Sunday morning, will you let me know what it is that's troubling me? Let me know what's disturbing me. Let me know why it is that I'm at this point in my life when I ought to have a smile on my face that uh, matches my spirit, but they're, they're out of balance, and I'm, I'm, I'm just troubled. And I trusted the Lord enough that uh, on that Sunday morning, I was waiting for the answer. The pastor, Bishop Saunders, preached that morning and had us to turn to the book of Isaiah, uh, the sixth chapter, our Sunday school lesson this morning, and, and the passage that was read earlier from the sixth chapter of Isaiah and those first eight verses. His subject that morning was, who will go for us? Who will go for us? That's the question that the Lord, through his angels, asked uh, 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 Isaiah. Uh, the Lord himself spoke and said, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And as I sat there and listened to the word, uh, uh, Bishop Saunders preached from that passage the context mostly of what it was, had to do with uh, connecting yourself to the Lord and the church uh, uh, and also committing yourself to the connection. He said this uh, may be what is meant for uh, uh, the congregation today is that somebody may need to come out of the world or somebody may need to have a better connection with the Lord and with the church. And I heard that. And, and uh, then he went on to talk about being committed once you make the connection. And I heard that, and, uh, but nothing really settled within me as to when his next point had to do with carrying the word of the Lord. His point was that everybody, if you believe in the Lord, and when you're really connected, that God calls us to carry his name. God calls us to carry our cross. God calls us to carry what it is that we must pick up in order to be a servant of the Lord. And then he explained that to the point that he said, now what this may mean to some is that the Lord is calling you to preach the gospel. And church, in my spirit, the words came to me, here's your answer. You ask for an answer, this is your answer. The more I listened to the message, the more fearful I became. You see, the point is that when it came to my makeup and my attitude and my nature, my character at that time, I never wanted to stand before people. It was never a part of my inclination to be a spokesperson publicly. Oh, I could speak with other people around me. Uh, I could sing, uh, as I was doing that morning, with the choir. But when it came to the answer being, God calling you to preach, you talk about fear coming up in my heart and in my mind. The next thing that came out of uh, Bishop's mouth was, now you may be fearful of, of what it is that God is saying. He said it's all right to be fearful 
as long as you do what the Lord tells you to do. As much as I try to put it out of my mind, he stayed on that point. I hadn't talked to him. I had just asked God, answer my prayer. Show me what it is that's causing me to be unhappy in my life and stressed on my heart and in my spirit. When he said, you have to do what God says, he gave an illustration of himself. He said, when the Lord called me to preach the gospel, he said, I was fearful and I didn't do it. And uh, he said, the Lord tried to get my attention through my family and instances with what had happened. Bishop and the Sister Saunders had 12 children. I'm sorry, 10 children that they had, and two of them died in childbirth. He said during the time that he was fearful, the Lord took one child, and the Lord took another child at childbirth, and spoke to him and said, if you don't preach the gospel, the next time I'm going to take you. And he said that message got in his heart and in his spirit and he went on and began preaching the gospel. And so he said, when you yield yourself to the Lord, that he can help you to overcome your fears. Well, as that point was being made, the next thing that was going on within me is that I'm unworthy to preach the gospel. I don't know that much about the Bible. Oh, I read it and I've studied it. I've taught the Bible uh, at that point in Sunday school, but my knowledge of the Bible was so weak and it was uh, insufficient. And as I was thinking about how unworthy I was, I had thought about my past sins, I had thought about words that had come out of my mouth, I had thought about actions that had been committed in my life that were sinful, making me unworthy, and no sooner than the thought and the feeling of unworthiness came, he said in his message, now you also may be feeling that you're unworthy. And I looked around and I said, where is all of this going? And where is it coming from? And he began to preach on being unworthy, but yet being forgiven by God when he calls you to do what he wants you to do. My next thought was, what is my family going to say? What is my wife? going to say and the next point in his message is you may be thinking about what your family is going to say. My thought after that was what about my co-workers? Uh, 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 I was planning at that point of going to medical school, had the application in my hand to get financial aid to go into medicine to go to medical school. Everybody at work knew that. What are they going to say? If I say that I'm going to preach the gospel, his point next was, don't worry about what other people might say. Oh, church, my point is that God has a way of getting your attention. The Lord has a way of speaking to you. It may not be to preach the gospel, but whatever it is that God has for you in your life, oh, give in to it. Pray for direction, and when he directs you, do it. Get involved with what it is that he wants you to do. Or oh, if he wants you to get connected, get connected. If he wants you to be committed, be committed. He wants you to carry him, carry him, carry his word. Lift him up 
wherever you may go. It came to the point that when he said in that message of what God said to Isaiah, now, Isaiah, you had a reason not for going. You had a reason for feeling unworthy. You had a reason for questioning everything. Now your sins are forgiven. Now I'm calling you again. Whom shall I send? Oh, and who will go for us? Isaiah said, here am I, send me. Oh, church, there was nothing else that I could do on that day. Well, there was something else that I did. I went down for prayer at the altar, doing the altar call on that day. And I just asked the church to pray for me, pray for me. All during the course of that next week, Oh, you don't know how much I fought what I knew I couldn't win. Oh, I fought it Monday. I fought it Tuesday. On through the next week, asking God why. And the Lord said, you asked for direction. You prayed for an answer. I gave it to you. You wanted direction. Stop fighting. You wanted an answer? Stop resisting. Now's the time to do it, to do it. No matter what I feared, I had to get over it. No matter how unworthy I felt, God said, I'll take care of that. No matter what other folk might say, God said, it's what I say. Until that next Sunday, oh, church, I couldn't fight it. I couldn't resist it. I couldn't run from it. I had to say, here am I, send me. Send me. Church, it means something. When you ask for direction, God indeed will give it. He'll give it. Whatever the answer is, do it. Be faithful. Do it. Jesus prayed all night long asking for direction. God, God gave him 12 apostles that would be with him. And one of them was a devil. But God gave him to be in the midst also. The Lord was giving even Judas a chance. The Lord was using him as well as the other 11, to do what he wanted him to do. Judas made the choice to go in the opposite direction. That wasn't that he wasn't chosen. No, he was chosen. Uh, but he wouldn't do what God wanted him to do. Church, I'm encouraging you today. Ask for direction. As the Lord gives it, do it. Perform it. Obey him. When you do his will, you'll find that he'll lead you the very next step and every step of the way. There may be someone today who desires to give your life to Christ, someone who uh, desires to come out of sin, tired of fighting the evil and the sin in the world, and knowing that you're only getting nowhere. Give your life to the Lord. Ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you, to save you. It is through the blood of Jesus that your sins can be and will be forgiven as you then follow in the footsteps of Jesus. If you're without a church home and you desire to make this the church of your choice, the Lord wants you to be connected. He wants you uh, to be committed and to be a part of the sheepfold to help carry his name. If you're here desiring prayer, whatever your needs might be, the invitation extended for you. Whosoever will, let him come. Let us stand, and as the brotherhood sings, if there's one or more desiring to come, won't you come unto the Lord, knowing indeed that he is here, it is the Lord who is able. It is the Lord who will see you through. 
Won't you come? Won't you come? Lord, like you said. 